And now, to talk about my game of the generation, we need to go back in time. All the way back to 2006. Ah, oh, 2006. This was the year where I discovered the world of Warcraft. It all began when a friend told me about this little online RPG he'd been playing. It looked very different from anything I'd seen before, so I thought I'd check it out. Instantly, the combat felt limited and dull. I always had to be online to play this game, 2006 Barjo thought. That's crazy. That's crazy. Hundreds of people all online at once, 2006 Barjo thought. That'll never work. That's not gonna work. 16 hours later, and I was all in. I started playing World of Warcraft on a level that I'd never played any other game before. When I wasn't at home, which was quite rare, all I could think about was getting back home to play more World of Warcraft. This game was just so very, very big. There was just so much to explore, so much loot to get, and so many newbies to gank. <laughs> Old School WoW, or Vanilla WoW, was a beast of a game. There was no GPS, no quest markers, only NPCs and other players to help you find where you needed to go. With each level, each quest complete, each new drop, my love for this game only grew and grew, until finally reaching the end goal of the... the end... Sure, it had an end. Back then, it was a long road to level 60, and I still remember the moment I hit the cap. I was fighting a rock elemental with my mechanical chicken by my side, who I think was only hitting for one or two. I initially played on the Alliance side, and I still remember that first time I saw a horde. That's a horde! I slash yelled, but no one was around to help me, and those rabbit pelts weren't going to collect themselves. We fought, I lost, quickly. And that's where the game really got its hooks in. I found a love for the battlefield, the complex strategies of outwitting real human opponents with these fascinating RPG mechanics. Back in those days, you'd learn the names of the other people on the server, who to avoid and who you could actually take on. I'd say out of about 2,300 hours of my time in WoW, maybe 80-90% of that was spent guarding flags and PvP, or just out in the open world trying to cause trouble. There are a few video games where I can recall exact fights with other players, but in WoW, I have a long list of them. Something about it, I don't know, it felt really personal because it was my character that I built up, so when I was attacked, yeah, it meant something. The constant pain and suffering of the always busy Stranglethorn Vale, where one innocent troll would turn into a war that would rage for hours. <laughs> I remember one Warsong Gulch capture the flag round which went for seven hours when no one gave up because of the principle of the thing. Alterac Valley battles that raged for days and days and days and only ending the moment you left the battle, missing out on that sweet honour. PvP was hard going back then. If you wanted to rank up and get the best gear, it would take a lot of time. You couldn't just grind it out, you had to be good at the game too, you had to win matches. Alliances were formed with other people in your faction, so it was already decided who was going to be Grand Marshal for that week, and so no one overtook each other too far. But Grand Marshal took a long time. I'm talking 10, 14 hours a day for months and months and months and months. You could not let up or you'd fall too far behind. <laughs> The sad thing was though, whenever I saw someone get to Grand Marshal, that highest rank, and they got the best gear, they'd play a few more rounds, but then after a couple of days, they just stopped playing. And that sudden departure worried me, and it was the first thing that made me question all the hours I was putting into this game. What's the point if I'm just going to quit when I get to the top? By the end of it all, my World of Warcraft character was having a better life than I was. He had heaps of friends, he had plenty of money, and he was always well fed. But real life Banjo was tired. His eyes were always sore. His friends were always wondering where he was. And the skin on his index finger and thumb had legitimately worn down to a red bloody pulp. Ugh. I have this one particular memory where I was driving my car and I couldn't quite work out where I was meant to go. And without even thinking, my hand instinctively lifted off the steering wheel and went to press the M key on an imaginary keyboard on my steering wheel. 
the worlds were blurring. World of Warcraft changed my life in many ways. I think I probably should have stopped playing before hour 2300, and I'm not actually sure if I wear that number as a badge of honour or embarrassment. But looking back, I genuinely have no regrets. I cherish my time with WoW, because it wasn't just a game, it was a community. I wasn't addicted to WoW, I was addicted to feeling important, and that's something that that game gave me, and at the time I think I needed that a bit in my life. I don't think a game will come around again and do what WoW did in my lifetime, and I certainly would never recommend losing yourself to a game like that to anyone, but I wouldn't trade any of those memories for anything. WoW was my summer in Europe, my romance in France. I often think of my old guildmates who I fought side by side with every day, who lived in a distant server in another part of the world, who I never met and probably never will.